Hi guys, Brooklyn, and welcome to my channel. So, if you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. I upload videos twice a week on Tuesdays and on Fridays. And if you are a turn subscriber, thank you so so much for your continued love and support of my channel. And I'm really hoping you're enjoying my content. And today's video is gonna be my blonde and ginger hair care routine. So I'm basically gonna talk you through my products I love for hair care. And I forgot to lift a couple. I've got like loads here, which I love, but I need to get more because I forgot to lift two products. Um dumb blonde here. I got them. <laughs> so um I've been back blonde for a good few months now. Now I think this video is going to be scheduled for a couple of months down the line. I'm not sure when but you'll see it when it's up. Um because yeah, I am trying to get a lot of videos filmed before I get back to my child even though that's not until like four months down the line but I want to be prepared in case something if it, he comes early or whatever even though I hope he doesn't come too too early but you know what I mean I like to try to get a lot of it filmed out so I have a lot to schedule so I'm kind of rambling but my plan is for the first three months of being like postpartum postnatal after having the child, um, I plan to have videos from when I was pregnant every week, one a week, pre-filmed and scheduled for them weeks so I don't need to worry about doing videos. Yeah, if I can have the time to do them after I have the child in the early stages, I will, but I don't need to pressurise myself. And the videos do film after the child's born and then for a few weeks will be like, the birth story and a couple of wee vlogs like the end of life of a newborn and stuff like that but yeah we're gonna go into my hair care so the first thing I need to mention which is kind of obvious is the colour so I get half a head of highlights the bleach highlights now you can tell this part is a lot like wider this part like even on top of my head under here is like a lot, I wouldn't say it, it is quite a bit darker than the top, you can see there. And that's due to colour pigment, well yeah, colour pigment build up from when I had black hair and from when I had the full ginger hair. Some of her dressers been trying to break through that and I've been trying to break through that with like London products, like London shampoos and stuff. And then underneath here is the ginger I get done still because I like to have a two-toned look. My goal is to have the top section all this really, really white blonde colour. I need my hair done again because the roots just grow through, especially because I'm pregnant. My hair grows quick regardless whether I'm pregnant or not, but pregnancy has been making my hair grow even quicker. It's crazy. So um, I do get the bleach with fairly volume, that's what her dresser uses on the top half of my head. Underneath she does do the copper with the hair dye. But I'm having a wee bit of a plan which it's a bit, should I do it, should I not? It's because my hair grows quite quick and because I'm not getting like the root bleach done yet. And I think I need that because... My hair grows quite quick and the highlight chain get does get them quite close up to the root and do you, you can get them quite close to the root or to the root but they don't really last as long as like a bleach say like a bleach or a high lift to the root like a root bleach root high lift colour it gives you a more cleaner effect I think so yeah some people will prefer to kind of have that natural looking root I'm not really about that now, when I get my hair done by my hairdresser, my hairdresser is amazing, I'm not saying she's not, but because she's amazing. But I find because my hair grows quite quick and um, my natural hair colour is an a mousy blonde, like an old dark, dark dirty mousy blonde. It's not nice. And I find the first week or two, well, 
even the first week it looks nice but you can still see roots but it isn't like bad after that it just looks really ruddy and i'm not about that life it just my hair grows too quick so um i am planning to cover it myself or doing the roots myself just now and again um and also because this has taken too long to lift i love my hairdresser but it's more i just i'm just too too like fussy about my hair like this and i want it now <laughs> do you know what i mean which probably isn't the best attitude to have because i don't want to wreck my hair but yeah so um color wise i'm planning to use this like next week or if I do, if I don't, then I don't. If I do, I do. I'm planning to use this one. It's the Chloral Nice and Easy SB2 Natural Cool Summer Beach Blonde, I think it's called. And I have used Chloral Nice and Sorry, you can see the ring light reflecting on that. I have used the Nice and Easy before. I've used their blacks when I had black hair. I've actually used their coppers, like their gingers, when I've had my hair fully ginger. So they do work well with my hair and um like gotta be so careful i'm gonna do a strand test because i'm gonna see if this will lift the darker blondes from my hair like the really stained out like the earlobe down or like the, do you know what i mean like see from here down like that darker color it's not meant to be darker it's meant to be like all one colour on the top section and the ginger might be only underneath. I'm going to see if this will lift it. So I'm going to do a strand test this week. Obviously the week I'm filming it. I'm going to do a strand test. So it'll tell me, even though colours and lift colour, but my hair has been like, hasn't been coloured to copper in ages and it's, I've had like lemon shampoos and everything onto it, so I'm praying it might do something. If it does lift it well, I'll use it, but if it doesn't touch it, I'll not use it. <laughs> so I'll just take a small section of my hair, just separate it from the rest of it. Like take a little bit of each developer and um colour put it in a wee dish with my wee hair brush, well hair down brush. Paint on, leave on for 45 minutes just to give it that extra time and then rinse it off. If my hair hasn't lifted that much or at all, if it feels like hopefully not dead, but if it does feel like dead or dry or really damaged in any way, I'm not touching it. <laughs> but if it's lifted really well, like it's got this colour and um. It looks really, really nice and clean blonde and it looks like it's done a really good job. Then it hasn't really damaged my hair. Then I'm not to know. <laughs> Sorry, her dresser. Um, but Muller Law, she uses this colour. So she uses the SB1, which is the warmer tone one. With just one more colour tone, you can see there. And then the back. I would say I'm between them two naturally. And obviously the top one is the stained copper colour. But yeah, that's a colour I will be using. If it, do, if it does work out well in my hair and I do like it, like on the strand test, that'll be the colour I'll be using for like the roots. And then obviously I use their copper or yeah, their one of their coppers I'll use on the underneath of my hair for the roots or the Garnier one I like. So that's colour. And then also for colour, which is a toner, I do like, so where is it? <laughs> so for um toners, I have these two, which I do really, really like. This one is for the, the blonde, like the bleach blonde. It is the Glaze Pearl Blonde colour gloss so basically it's a semi-permanent colour conditioner it's meant to tone your hair and uh pigment i'll show you what it looks like i've used this a couple of times i used it for my um gender reveal that's the last time i used it before i got my hair done again 
a few weeks before and my hair like just made it look really really nice and icy it does have purple pigment which is really really good for giving me that really icy white look and you can put it on damp hair or dry hair i tend to do both depends what the mood was i did use it on my damp hair well wet hair in the shower the first time when i separated it just separate the blonde from the ginger and just do the blonde parts of this um done it with the wet hair the first time did it give me a good effect done it with the dry hair i found the dry hair did give you a better effect maybe it's because i left it in longer than the dry hair i don't know but it did give me like a really nice clean blonde look which i love like my goal is this all over <laughs> not all over keeping the ginger in the light but all over the top section but this glaze it's around 15 pound you can get it from Superdrug. i get it on amazon i have got actually yeah i've got it on amazon the time i bought it but if i needed another one and i was in Superdrug, i'd buy from Superdrug. i know i ramble a lot but this is really really good it just helps condition your hair too I find after I've used it, my hair just feels so soft and it feels so smooth and my hair just looks really nice and icy white and I love that. I will put a picture of what it looked like when I done it last time, like a month or over a month ago. Well, when I film this, I film this. When I film this, it's over a month ago, but when it comes out, God knows when it's going to be. <laughs> but yeah, it, it does work. I would recommend getting glaze, if you, especially if you're blonde like me glaze for toning your hair so for the copper which i haven't used since i've went blonde but i've ever felt my hair was fading too much underneath and i was toning with the semi-permanent toner on top for a special occasion and i fancy just kind of adding a bit of a more of copper like retouch my copper ginger underneath i love this it's a really nice deeper copper shade it is the bleach london semi permanent color in the shade proper copper this is really really nice like it is a really really natural look and i would say it's like a level six seven type of copper it isn't too bright or in your face i do like the brighter coppers but but since i went back blonde on top i have been preferring the natural looking ginger copper colour so this is really really good and even if you are all over ginger copper I'd recommend this if you're looking for a really natural looking colour but it's still vibrant this one that does look really nice makes your hair feel amazing now when I do tone my hair I do use a leave-in well a leave-in obviously always but I do use a deep conditioner mask after sometimes it depends on when I'm toning if I'm toning my hair of dry hair I do separate them when I've toned my hair, but I also like do a light shampoo in each section. And then I just kind of make sure the water's clear, bring all back, and then I put a good mask in my hair, and my hair feels absolutely amazing. So I'll get into the shampoos. I'm going to try to organise this a bit better because I'm all over the place. Always am. So, um, let me see. Get my shampoos in order. I just embarrass myself on the internet all the time. Um, I think it's <laughs> all the shampoos. <laughs> I have literally five sitting here. I know, five. But um, one of them is like completely done and the other one's like almost done. So I'll start with like since we're on topic to colour and blonding i'll start with like lightning shampoos i have these who this one's done as you can tell it's like literally done this one's like one one or two more uses and then it's done it's on its way out too this one is the first one i bought when i first went like got my first round of highlights i've had three rounds of highlights so far since summer um this is the john freda gold blonder lightning shampoo um has lemon citrus extract so it kind of helps break down color pigments it isn't like a harsh lightning shampoo well lemon can dry your hair out but it's meant to be more and more gentle and bleach but obviously be careful of it because use a good deep condition mask if you are buying these 
um, but I find it does kind of help remove colour buildup. It doesn't take it away completely. Uh, it is more of a really, really gradual process. I find my, this part wouldn't have got as blonde, even though it doesn't look that blonde. Because <laughs> it looks like, compared to this really white, this just looks like a duller, warmer blonde. But I think if I didn't use these shampoos, my hair wouldn't be as blonde as what it is now. And I'm glad I did. But I find I use it as a treatment when I do my hair with lightening shampoo. I separate out my hair the, the way I would for toning it up. I put a load of this in my hair, slather it all in, leave it for like five minutes, rinse it out after I've washed the back of my hair, like the copper part, with an Russian shampoo. Do the same thing, like wash each section, but this is like a treatment. And then make sure everything's rinsed out after two times, like after doing double shampoo. And then I bring my hair to the back, use my deep conditioning mask, always use that. And my hair just looks lighter and it's kind of treated my hair and took out some of them unwanted pigments. This does the same thing as this. I find there's not much difference in these shampoos. The ones I would prefer, the one I do prefer actually is this one because this one isn't as dry as this one. I find this one's a bit more dry, but this one because it has Colourplex, that's the Charles Workington Colourplex shampoo, like blonde enhancing shampoo. This is amazing and it doesn't dry out hair as much as what the other one, this one does, but obviously use a good conditioner. I do find these work, but they're very, very gradually to work. And I do have reviews on both of them if you want to check them out. If they're up before this, I'll have, or I'll try to have them linked down below. But I would recommend these if you're going blonde, like you're in the process of going blonde. I wouldn't recommend them if your hair is all less colourless white. You don't need it. But if your hair is like something like this and you're trying to like break down old pigment, colour pigment or natural pigment, you get these. They're really, really nice. So, other shampoos, <laughs> I'm trying to work but right around here to see if I can find shampoos, but not realising I had to set them down here. I've got a couple of Toten shampoos. <laughs> I know, I hurt her attic now. I always have been, but yeah, I've got two Toten shampoos. This one is a Charles Worthington Colour Plex Ultraviolet Shampoo. Now, if you've been watching my channel for years, when I had blonde hair four and a half, five years ago. I had this back in that day and I had the ultraviolet one and I love this shampoo. It has pure strong, you can see it like there, you don't need me to open it. The other like lemon shampoos have a lemon tone to them. But this is like a purple violet, like really strong pigment to it. And it really does get rid of yellow. I find it really does get me that really white look now obviously you can leave it in that bit longer to get more of a grey blonde look but I'm not about the grey blonde anymore I'm more about the icy clean blonde white look <laughs> but this is really really good for removing any brassy yellow tones now if you've got a lot of orange it wouldn't be good get your blue even though it says brunette but I'm going to try their blue one because it will kind of help remove like some of the orange pigments from the top section of my hair. And the way I use my toner shampoo is have my hair separated because obviously I don't want any of this touchless, even though it wouldn't touch it, but I don't want any kind of purple shampoo or blue. It's God forbid blue shampoo touching this because this will affect it if it's blue. I know I'm rambling, but this is amazing. If you're looking just for that really nice silvery white look, you don't want the eye, well it does give you icy but it doesn't give you like the icy a blue wood but if you have more of a yellow in your hair instead of orange tones this one's really really good i love it <laughs> so the other toning shampoo which is it has um blue and violet purple pigment this one is the provoke go icy toning shampoo and does say it gets you two sheets lighter in one use it doesn't lighten your hair they don't lighten your hair they just kind of brighten up by kind of toning and counteracting but this shampoo just 
kind of helps by removing both the yellow and orange so if you have both flame tones in your hair this will be good for you i do really like this i don't think it's as strong as the charlie to Irvington, but it is a decent shampoo and i have used it not less times since i washed my hair but the time before and i would recommend it for a really cheapy one for nourishing shampoos this one's brand new but i have bought it a few times before it is the garni alto blends coconut shampoo i believe yeah it is coconut oil and cocoa butter this is a smoothing shampoo and it is a really really good shampoo me and my husband both use this shampoo and we find it does clean your hair really well but also keeps your hair nice and smooth and it kind of moisturizes your hair and nourishes your hair and i find this just really works my hair in between the times where I'm not using my purple shampoos and I'm just using normal shampoo and a quick hair wash. This just helps my hair feel nice and silky smooth. I love it. And it's only around three or four pounds you get from Savers and some drug and boots. But this is a really good shampoo and it smells absolutely amazing. I do also like the OGX coconut oil shampoo. That one's amazing too. So um, that's my recommendations. I actually bought a bonding shampoo, which I haven't used yet, but I'll probably review it or mention it in a favourites if I do like it or not. So on to the hair mask slash deep conditioner that I absolutely love. I do have a few other ones that are my favourites too, but this one's my absolute favourite. It is Garnet Ultima Blends. It's her honey strengthening, honey treasure strengthening repair mask. I love this. It's absolutely amazing. That's what the old packaging looks like. And now this is what the new one looks like. It's like a proper luxurious feeling mask. This is really good for strengthening your hair. I find my hair feels stronger. It feels more nourished. It feels really conditioned. I find I prefer using a cult... Mask. Um, a deep conditioning mask compared to a regular conditioner because I find, especially with bleached hair, I need that bit of hydration in the hair, more extra hydration and strengthening. And I find, I leave this in for like five minutes when I wash my hair. What I do, a lather load of it in my hair from root to tip, put it in a wee top knot bun with a clip or one of them invisible bobby like springy hair ties on top of my head in a bun and then i use my like exfoliator exfoliator sound really weird i use my exfoliator like my exfoliating gloves with my scrub body scrub to exfoliate on my body for in preparation for fake tan and i find once i've done my exfoliation i rinse out this hair mask and then my hair feels absolutely amazing. So it kills two birds with one stone. Um, the one I would recommend as well is their coconut oil one. It's in the darker. Looks like no one. This one has the same colour packaging of this one. But it's in this kind of mask packaging. That one's really good too. I love that. I also love the hair fades one. But I prefer the ultimate blends. They're better I think. So I also like the OGX conditioners i find their regular conditioners are really hydrating too but i think my favorite are definitely the garnier ultimate blends they are just beautiful especially a honey one i haven't tried any of the other ones apart from the coconut the two coconut ones and the honey one i love them all um so i'll get into treatments or styling products treatments type of thing so for um when i come out of the shower once my hair has been in a towel i do towel dry like a lot of the moisture out and then i blow dry and just use a random wee travel hair dryer to get my hair blow dried but I sometimes air dry too or just towel dry but usually i like to kind of leave my hair in a towel for as long as i can that day to keep it really like to stop you don't so much heat on it if that makes sense it just kind of takes away a lot of the water so i'm only using like not that much heat but for a scalp treatment to help my hair grow and 
faking up certain areas, even though my hair is really, really thick. But I like to kind of try to fake it up, like the way, obviously, like, the parts that aren't as thick. Especially with preparation for after having a child, I'm going to be using this one to stop any hair loss, which, touch wood, I'll not get any flipping really bad postpartum hair loss because I will cry, literally. But this is the Waterman's, it's the Grow More Scalp Elixir. So basically, spray a few wee sprays into your scalp, use the nozzle. Massage it with your fingers into your scalp. I use it at night time or when I've washed my hair before I blow dry. And it really does. I think it does. I've used this before years ago. And I think it does help your hair grow more. And it also helps thicken up certain areas that are not as thick. And it just makes your hair look nice and fuller. I like to kind of maximise that as best I can. Even though I do have quite thick hair. But yeah. But this stuff is really, really good. It's, it is expensive. It's around twenty twenty five pound, but it's worth it. And I will be buying another bottle. I bought this a few weeks ago, but I will be buying another bottle before I give birth, so I have it to keep my hair in check. But this is really, really good for growing your hair out too. So, um, a cheaper alternative would be the Lee Stafford um grower. What's it's called Grow Elixir. It's in the purple bottle. It's really, really good. Me and my husband use that one. Um, so that's for like scalp treatments and and also that scalp elixir helps prevent your hair from your hair your scalp <laughs> from drying out. Because I sometimes find, especially in winter, that my hair does I keep on saying hair. My scalp does tend to feel a bit dry and get a bit dry. And I find scalp tonics like the Waterman's one or the least effort one help to counteract any dry scalp, which is amazing. So, um, on to leave in products for the hair. I love after getting out of the shower and when I'm about to blow dry my hair or even air dry, it, I love these two for spraying in my hair. So, this one I've bought over and over again for years. It is Argan Oil. Leave in heat protecting condition spray. Basically, it's a heat defense leave in spray and it has Moroccan argan oil extract. So, it has like a two in one system. You can get this for a pound in Poundland and it is really, really good. It's quite finely milled, the spray, so it doesn't like cling to certain patches, doesn't weigh down your hair or anything, even though my hair doesn't get weighed down that easily. I've got thick hair, but I find this is really good for getting a really nice fur spray. Especially I find it really useful when I'm curling my hair or straightening my hair or doing some sort of styling to it. Even if I'm not, I'm just using some some of this to put in my hair before I blow dry it. It's really, really good and I can't fault it. It just makes your hair feel amazing. I love this one too. Really, really love this one. This is the Revlon Unique One. 10 in 1 leave in hair spray, like hair condition spray. I cannot speak today. So it basically says it's an all in one hair treatment. It pretty much is the same concept as the uh, organ oil one, but obviously a lot more moisturising and nourishing. This one has, um, I think, is it 10 treatments? Yeah, 10 real benefits, not 10 treatments, but it pretty much is like 10 treatments in one. This one does have heat protecting in it too, and it also does kind of help hydrate your hair, nourish your hair, smooth it. it. It does a lot of things. It makes my hair feel amazing. This one is definitely a thicker type of spray, so if you have thinner hair, it might not be for you, or use less of it. But I do find this is really great for my hair, because I find it does soak into my hair, and it does help keep my hair from looking frizzy and... It helps smooth any flyaways. It helps really hydrate my hair and bring me more moisture into my hair, which is what my hair needs, and also strengthens my hair too. And having that bit of heat protecting in it too is really, really handy, especially for heat styling. I absolutely love it. And it is around £10. You can get it on Amazon or some beauty supply stores, but I absolutely love it. It's just a really good hair treatment. So for a leave-in cream, which I don't use it all the time, I use it when I'm 
loads of amber hair, but sometimes I don't use it. This one is L'Oreal LV Dream Length No Hair Cut Cream. So basically, this one I find helps to really add more moisture into my hair and add more hydration and seals any dead ends. So say, for instance, my hair needs a good cut or I haven't had it, a good cut off it in a while. This will help kind of smooth down any of them dead ends and make it look a bit better, which is good. And I find it does give me like a nice hydrated, smoothed, sleek look. And I use a tiny bit and put it through my hair, like work it through from mid lengths to end, brush it through. And then I'll go in with my oil. A lot of this is really, really good, especially if you have dry hair, especially drier ends, it's really good for that. So we'll go in with my oil, which is the John Frieda Frizzy's Remedy Oil, I think it is. Miraculous Recovery Repair and Tropical Oil. I bought this a few weeks ago when I was in town and it's like a dupe of the Voodoo's Raw Oil, I think it's pronounced. It's definitely like a really thinner oil, it isn't like a serum oil. So it does kind of help penetrate your hair more and it really gets into any kind of nooks and crannies. This is meant to heal your hair, like heal any damage, make your hair feel a lot better and I do find it does do that. I do around two pumps before I blow dry my hair and then just brush it through, blow dry and then if my hair feels a bit dry or frizzy, do another pump and my hair, it sorts it out. My hair just feels like silk. It makes your hair feel amazing. If you have thinner hair, I don't know if I would recommend it or just use a tiniest, tiniest amount because it will, it can weigh down your hair. It doesn't really wear down my hair that much, but it would if I used too much of it because it is a really, really like rich oil. So it has um jojoba oil and yeah, coconut jojoba, I think. It has a lot of different oils in the one and it is for um frizzy damaged hair so if you've got bleached hair you'll love this and it does physically repair damage and frizz which i do think it does it makes your hair look look and feel a lot better and i love this i also love the macadamia oil that healing oil treatment that one's more like a thicker type serum that one's really really good i love that this one's a new one because I ran out of that one. I had that one for like a year nearly. I bought this one and I really like it just as much, I think. It's really, really good. Look at all the products I have in my bed. It's crazy. Um, So I think that's it. <laughs> oh, for styling, I do love my Mark Hill Pick and Mix Waver. I use that for waving my hair. I could get it out from box, but I can't be bothered and for straightening my hair if I do straighten my hair like the odd time it's really where I straighten my hair after blow drying it I use my GHD pink like pink and black the plates are pink they're called pink orchid and the rest of it's are black but they're 10 years old but they have lasted and they're still good as new that's what I use for straightening my hair when I fancy a straighter look which is like a few times a year if that if I'm styling my hair, like putting the effort to style it, I would just do like waves or curls. And I love the Mark Hill Pick and Mix. I have two different attachments to it. I have the mermaid ones, just the regular mermaid ones. I'll try to put pictures up just because I can't even bother getting them. I would use the mermaid one for like waves, nice, nice, nice tight waves. And then I would use the Wicked Waver or Textured Waver, it's pretty much a curler, but it has bobbles on it for tighter curls. Or a good trick I do, which I'll do a tutorial on at some point, is I tie my hair on a top ponytail. Obviously, make sure it's brushed out and everything and heat protection spray through. And do it like 10 sections and curl them. And that kind of makes sure my hair gives me a really and that gives my hair a really really nice looser effortless bouncy blow dry look curl pretty much and I am getting 
the chopstick curler for Christmas because my law curled my hair last night. That's why it still looks curly. Obviously, some parts are straighter. You can see that where I have my hair tied up in the top ponytail when I was in bed. But the rest of it's pretty much really nice and curly. And I am going to get Connor, my husband, to get me the chopstick curler, the pink one from Mark Hill Pick and Mix. So I have that handle as well in case something happens in the other one. I have two instead of one. And I want to try their wee zigzag um, handle to it. Some were a little wicked wafer, but it's obviously zigzags. And I want to get that. Um, so, yes. What else? I do use her spray on her when I curl it. I use the L Net L'Oreal when I have one in my cupboard. I forgot to get it, but it's a pretty picture. So I do her spray, and I don't her spray all the time. If I want my hair to really, really last, and I have curled it and I've spent ages curling my hair, I will use my L'Oreal and L Net after each section to her spray it so it stays in place. And I find that's the best hair spray for keeping my hair nice and in place and keeps my curls defined and like, set for days until I wash my hair again. So I think that's it. Well, no, that's it now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again for the next one. Stay gorgeous. God bless. Bye.